far in the Tibetan plateau, in a high altitude land where few people dwell, is Qinghai province. This area, larger than all of France, only has a small population of only about 5 million people in the whole province. Many of these are nomadic yak herders who live in the high mountains between 10,000 to 14,000 feet. The Tibetan Plateau is called the Third Pole because after the North and South Pole, this is the third largest supply of drinking water in the world. Flowing out of the Himalayas, this supplies almost 50% of the world's population in China, India, and Southeast Asia, their drinking water. Qinghai Province, although virtually unheard of by everyone outside of China, is the source of three of China's greatest rivers, the Yellow River, the Mekong River, and the Yangtze River. In this series, we will be exploring the life and culture around these remote areas. We're hiking Princess Wenxiong's temple. About 40 minutes outside of Yushu. Prayer flags are flapping everywhere. It is ridiculous. It is a beautiful blue sky day out here. The wind is whipping a little bit, but we're climbing over this temple down here. You can see that golden roof temple below us. And this whole mountain is covered with prayer flags. One thousand three hundred years ago, Princess Wenxiang left the Tang Dynasty capital, which was then known as Chang'an, and today is modern Xi'an. She left on a three-year journey in a political marriage to the king of the Tubuo Empire, Songtsin Gampo, who was ruler of the Tibetan people. As Princess Wenxiang traveled from Xi'an down into Lhasa, she rode on horseback and was carried by an envoy of Songtsin Gampa. She happened to stop around Yushu near the Yangtze River and she rested here and today there is a temple called the Princess Wenchun Temple. She was thought to spend a lot of time here, several months resting, and today you can see the prayer flags have been erected and the temple is erected here to commemorate her journey from Xi'an to Lhasa to marry one of the most important and powerful kings. We are almost to the top. The wind has been blowing. We just walked through this huge tunnel of prayer flags. It is totally awesome.
This is a Tibetan slingshot. You can see it's made entirely out of yak fur. Uh, we just got it from a nomad man. He gave it to us for free. I'm gonna give this a try and uh, see where the rock goes here. Hopefully don't break the camera. <laughs> As you drive from Lab Monastery to Yushu Town, you pass this amazing, beautiful stone village. This is Gowu Village, and everything you see in it is made of stone, local stone that's gathered from the mountains here. This is particularly interesting because most Tibetan homes are either made of mud, or Tibetans tend to live in nomad tents made of yak hair. In this particular area, though, you see the architecture is made of stone, which is very, very unique because such stones don't exist across most of Tibet. So this is a beautiful place and it's really worth a half a day hike up to the top of the mountains to see the beautiful grasslands and the amazing mountains at 4,500 meters. Yushu, Tibet Autonomous Prefecture, lies in the far south of Qinghai Province and covers an area roughly the same size as the U.S. state of Washington and about half the size of Germany. has a population of about 300,000 people, with about 97% of this population being ethnically Kham Tibetan. It has one of the highest percentages of Tibetan people anywhere on the whole Tibetan plateau, and some of the best preserved Tibetan culture in all of Western China. Well over 90% of Yushu Prefecture lies above the tree line. This is an extreme high altitude environment. Yushu town itself is home to a tributary of the Yangtze River. 
And any trip to Yushu is going to take you very, very close to what's called the Sanjiang Yuan National Park. This means the Three Rivers National Park. In Yushu itself is a monastery called the Jegu Monastery, which is found on a hill overlooking Yushu town and belongs to the Sakya sect of Tibetan Buddhism. In the past, this was a bone temple, but was later converted to a Sakya sect monastery around 1398. We'd love to bring you out to Yushu. It's a beautiful place. Not too many foreigners get out there. Check us out at elevatedchips.com to see more of Tibetan culture.